All right. It's our pleasure to welcome Eckhart Meinrinken from the University of Toronto, and he will be speaking to us about weighted normal bundles and the isotropic embedding theorem. Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, well, I'd like to start off by thanking Jeremy and Peter uh, for organizing this wonderful conference. Um, so what I'm going to talk about um, really started out as a small, I might say, a question, small side project, which over time has to has developed into some sort of obsession of mine, um, simply because it turned out to be richer and, and more interesting than initially expected. So the problem is to develop, so to speak, the right setting, the correct setting for, uh, might say, quasi-homogeneous -hom normal form theorems, or, or you might say anisotropic normal form theorems. Uh, those would be normal form theorems uh, involving both linearization and uh, quadratic approximation, cubic approximations, and so on at the same time. And yeah, so these isotropic embedding theorem uh, that I'm going to talk about at the end uh, is not really a big uh, main result or anything like this. It's more like a case study for, for these weighted normal form theorems, which illustrates nicely what's, what's going on. All right, so let me uh, start out. Um, by giving you the references. So th there's one small paper I, I posted on the archive in, in January, um, which develops this theory in, in case of weightings up to order two, where you have linear and quadratic directions, so to speak. And the general case will be developed uh, in, in work with uh, Yanis. But let me start out with uh, actually some uh, earlier work uh, to kind of motivate uh, this, this weighted story. So I'm, I'm going to go back to these Euler-like vector fields that uh, Rea briefly mentioned in his talk. So this was from, from a paper of Enrique Busti and Hudson Lima and myself, and we gave this definition of an Euler-like vector field. So the correct definition of an Euler-like vector field is um, like this. Suppose you have a submanifold of a manifold, and you have a vector field vanishing along that submanifold then uh, well, you get a vector field on the normal bundle to the submanifold, which we call the linear approximation. And the vector field X is called Euler-like if that linear approximation is the Euler vector field, the standard Euler vector field uh, of the normal bundle. So the vector field that generates scalar multiplication. And the main lemma from our paper is that if you have such an Euler-like vector field, relative to a submanifold, then it determines actually a unique tubular neighbor embedding in such a way that under this tubular neighbor embedding, uh, the vector field X really becomes the Euler vector field. So there's a small, uh, sm uh, small print there. Uh, it, it, we're really talking just about uh, germs of tubular neighbor embeddings. I'm, I'm really talking about what goes on along a small neighborhood of my submanifold. So I, I don't necessarily uh, need a, a global embedding of, of the normal bundle, and I don't need my, my vector field to be, uh, say, complete or anything like that. So this is the setting I, I, I want to consider. So uh, this, this lemma basically tells you that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these Euler-like vector fields and tubular neighborhood embeddings. It's essentially the same thing. Uh, again, uh, with a little small print, it's, it's on the level of germs, germs along the submanifold. Yeah, and it, it's, it's really just a reformulation of, of the notion of a tubular neighborhood embedding, if you like, but uh, it's really a very useful uh, reformulation because often it's easier to come up with these Euler-like vector fields uh, satisfying the, the properties that you need. So he, here's a typical example of how you apply this in, in practice. And this is the application to uh, Weinstein's Lagrangian embedding theorem. So we assume we have a symplectic manifold and we have a Lagrangian submanifold. Then in this situation, uh, you can look at the linear approximation of the two form. Lagrangian, of course, means, well, the manifold has half the dimension, uh, the submanifold has half the dimension of the symplectic manifold and the symplectic form vanishes along n, while the pullback vanishes. 
um, so in, in, in coordinates, uh, the, the uh, symplectic form has, has, has filtration degree one, so to speak. And then you can look at the linear approximation. It's a two form on the normal bundle, which ends up being symplectic. And the Weinstein theorem tells you that there exists a tubular neighbor embedding, which takes this uh, model symplectic form to your given symplectic form. So I'm, I'm always sweeping under the rug. It's just germs of, of such tubular neighbor embeddings, of course. And here's how you prove it using Euler-like vector fields. So it's a sketch-up proof. Uh, first of all, uh, you choose a primitive. It should be a primitive which vanishes along n and uh, whose differential is the given symplectic form. So you can easily get such a primitive, for example, by taking an initial uh, tubular neighborhood embedding and uh, using the homotopy operator for that. Then using this one form, you can define a vector field. So you take the vector field whose contraction with omega is this one form. And then you see easily that this vector field is Euler-like. So it determines a tubular neighbor embedding under which the Euler vector field corresponds to this Euler-like vector field X. And it turns out at this stage, you're basically done by the following calculation. So you look at the lead derivative of phi pullback omega un, uh, under the Euler vector field. This is the same thing as the pullback of the lead derivative of omega with respect to the Euler-like vector field. Lx omega by definition of x is d of alpha. And d of alpha by definition of alpha is omega. And so this equation tells you phi pullback of omega is homogeneous of degree one, right? But if it's homogeneous of degree one, it tells you uh, it's linear. So it's the same as this linear approximation. So phi pullback of omega is equal to the linear approximation and, and that's exactly what we want to prove. So it's a, a very short proof of, of this Weinstein Lagrangian embedding theorem. All right, so this worked very nicely. But now we can ask, um, how about uh, isotropic set manifolds? Why can't we use the same method for isotropic set manifolds? It's the same thing. The symplectic form pulls back to zero. So you can look at its uh, linear approximation. Well, the problem is the linear approximation is well-defined, uh, but it's just not symplectic. And the reason for this is that um, there are some directions normal uh, to your submanifold where the symplectic form vanishes linearly, but then there are other directions where it vanishes more like quadratically. And if you just take the linear approximations and these quadratic directions, you just lose. So the uh, linear approximation becomes degenerate. And there's no, no way that this can serve as a good model for uh, our, our manifold near the isotropic. So the idea of, of making it work anyhow is to use some approximation with weights. So to somehow assign weight two to the linear directions, the directions that used to be linear. So just, just double their weight. And so everything is, is just quadratic. And then look at the quadratic approximation after you've done that. This is roughly the idea. of, of and, and it turns out that this actually works. All right, so, so we want to develop this setting of, of manifolds, uh, submanifolds with weights in normal directions. And yeah, the simplest definition I can think of is, is the following. It uses a bit of coordinates, but not, not too bad. Uh, so let's consider a, a weight sequence. So some of these weights might be zero, uh, but then there are weights one and maybe weights two, three, and so on, up to some largest weight r. So this we call an, uh, an order r weighting. And then for open subsets of Rn, we get some, some uh, filtration of the smooth functions by ideals. So the ith ideal is um, generated by monomials whose total weight is at least i. So, this, so x1 has weight w1, x2 has weight w2, and so on. So the total weight would be summation uh, of, of the powers times uh, wa, and this should be at least i. All right, so, so you, you have, have these, these um, 
open subsets with, with weightings. And then we uh, say an order R weighting on a manifold is just given by an atlas with uh, charts given uh, by, by such use. And, and, and all the transition maps should preserve the weight filtrations. This, this is the, the simplest definition I can think of of, of, of this weighted setting. And so, yeah, what, what does it give you for, for the manifold? So you have these filtrations uh, for the charts, and of course you get filtrations of the algebra functions on the manifold, right? So you get this filtration uh, where function has filtration degree i if its local expression in, in any of these charts has filtration degree i. And well, the part of filtration degree one, uh, th that has to be the vanishing ideal of some closed submanifold because that, that's how it works in the local coordinates. And so in, in practice, we usually take our n, our segment for n as given, and then we speak of a weighting along n. So we basically have weights in normal directions. So the, the weighting is, is given by some filtration of the algebra of functions, where the degree one part is just the usual uh, vanishing ideal, but then the, the higher ones might be more interesting. So the special case r equals one is just a usual uh, setting. So the trivial weighting, so to speak, where these ideals are just the kth powers of the vanishing ideal. So these are functions which vanish to order k along n. But in, in general, it's more complicated. And we, we just think of, of these um, functions in the kth ideal as functions vanishing to order k in some sort of weighted sense. All right, so, and, and what's, what's nice now is that in this weighted sense, one gets a new notion of a normal bundle. So this is basically our, our main observation. So if you have such a, an order R weighting along a submanifold, it determines a unique fiber bundle, which we call the weighted normal bundle. Um, so this fiber bundle comes uh, with a scalar multiplication action. And so it makes sense to talk about polynomials. And uh, yeah, so it, it contains submanifold as, 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 so to speak, zero sections, the fixed point set for this um, scalar multiplication. And it's in such a way that if you take the associated graded to our um, filtration on the algebra of smooth functions and the, the, the kth order part of the associated graded, those are exactly the polynomials of uh, the homogeneous polynomials of order k. So this, this is how, how it is set up. So there is a fiber bundle like, like that. Again, if, if you're in the trivial case, uh, in case of trivial weighting, so, so whether these ideals are just functions vanishing to order k, then this is the familiar uh, fact that the associated graded algebra to that would be homogeneous polynomials of order k on the normal bundle. And so we, we're just generalizing this. And the way it is set up is, um, well, if you have some function uh, in this case filtration ideal, it gives by definition more or less uh, a case order approximation, which is a, a function which is homogeneous of degree k, a homogeneous polynomial, so to speak, of degree k. And you get these same kinds of approximations also for differential forms, vector fields, multi-vector fields, and so on. So for anything that is, so, so we, we automatically get a filtration on, 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 on the Lie algebra of vector fields, for example. And if a vector field has filtration degree, say, negative one, which is possible, then you get a homogeneous vector field on this weighted normal bundle, homogeneous of degree negative one. So it's, it, it just works like a charm. Uh, I should say this uh, weighted normal bundle here, it's defined somewhat indirectly, it's somewhat abstractly. We have a might say better, more, more concrete definition of the weighted normal bundle uh, as a sub quotient of the Rth tangent bundle. So, so there's this definition that works like that. Um, so the Rth tangent bundle, uh, that's uh, the, the Rth jet bundle. Um, so, so R jets of, of paths in, in the manifold. So you basically look at uh, equivalence classes of paths 
where uh, two paths uh, are equivalent if they have the same Taylor expansion up to order R in local coordinates. So this is the Rth tangent bundle. And this weighted normal bundle can be defined as a subquotient of that. If you're in the, in the uh, trivial case, so a trivial weighting, this is the usual description of, of the normal bundle that you take the restriction of the tangent bundle to n and then quotient by the tangent bundle Tn. But in the uh, higher case, it's more, more interesting, more complicated. And it turns out uh, for, for these higher order weightings, this uh, weighted normal bundle, uh, even though it has this scalar multiplication operation, it's not a vector bundle. So it, it is a, what was called a graded bundle in the sense of Krabowski Rodkiewicz. Graded bundle basically just means having this uh, scalar multiplication operation. It's isomorphic to a graded vector bundle, but it's not canonically isomorphic. So this is precisely what one gets. Right, so the story with uh, Euler-like vector fields goes through for these weighted normal bundles very beautifully. So again, we have this order R weighting, we get the filtration on the algebra of functions. Then uh, we have a definition of weighted Euler-like vector field. So a weighted Euler-like vector field would be a vector field on the manifold M of filtration, filtration degree zero. So again, uh, the algebra of vector fields gets a filtration. You just say a vector field has, has filtration degree uh, K if it raises the filtration degree on functions by K. So Euler-like vector fields shouldn't change the filtration degree at all. So it's just to preserve the filtration on the algebra of functions. And then it has a weighted homogeneous approximation on a weighted normal bundle. And this linear, uh, this approximation should be the Euler vector field. Uh, and the Euler Eckhard, vector field is just one, one quick uh, question has arisen. Um, yes. Someone in the audience wants a reminder of, of, what, of what R is in this case. Of what R is, or, or R could be uh, any, any number. So, so, so we have this, um, we start out with a weight sequence, right? So there could be weights uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. The largest weight that appears, that's our R. So the simple setting is R equals 1. This is just uh, the usual weighting, so the, the kind of trivial weighting where you just look at order of vanishing. But then you could have R equals 2, uh, where you also uh, in, involve weights 2 and so on. So this, this is the R that appears in the story. Does that answer the question, I hope? Yeah, let, let's see. I, I don't see the chat. <laughs> no, um, yes, thank you. OK. OK, so, so, so uh, we have a definition of Euler-like vector field on these weighted normal bundles. And then we have the same theorem as before. So if you have a weighted Euler-like vector field, then it determines a weighted tubular neighborhood embedding of this weighted normal bundle in such a way that the weighted Euler-like vector field corresponds to the Euler vector field. So by Euler vector field, I just mean a vector field which generates the scalar multiplication operation. So that we don't have a vector bundle, but we have scalar multiplication. So we still have an Euler vector field. Okay, so, so that's very good. Now uh, let's go to, towards this isotropic embedding theorem. I, sh I should first uh, say, uh, Let's spe specialize to the case of R equals two. We saw R equals one corresponds to the trivial weighting. That's the same story as before, just usual order of vanishing. What does R equals two mean? So it turns out R equals two, uh, a weighting of, uh, with R of order R equals two, uh, that's actually just equivalent to having some sub bundle of the normal bundle. So that's actually very simple. Even though it's very simple, um, the construction of the weighted normal bundle is actually not, not that straightforward. It's not that easy to say what exactly it is. But, but let, let's first describe the, uh, the, the filtration. So the filtration is, is such that in degree one, it's the vanishing idea of n. In filtration degree two, what you get is functions in the vanishing ideal, such that the differential vanishes on this f. Or, or I, I wrote f tilde because I want to lift it to a sub bundle of the tangent bundle. So the F tilde is the, the pre-image, basically. 
so, so th this is what, 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 what J is. So J contains I squared, but it's a little bit bigger than that. And the, and the rest is, is kind of generated from that. So if you know this up to degree two, then, then the, the, the remaining ones you also know. All right, so the, the bottom line is, if you have such a subbundle, it determines one of these weighted normal bundles. Um, yeah, you, you could try to describe it in, in terms of, of, of this jet description. So roughly speaking, uh, what you do is you look at two jets of paths, such that one jet of that path starts out in the direction of, of F, up to some equivalence relation. Well, the equi equi equivalence relation is maybe not so easy to say what it is, at least not, not in, the, in these remaining three minutes. In any case, there's this weighted normal bundle. All right, and so, so now, now let's specialize to the isotropic embedding theorem, what it tells you in that case. Well, if you have an isotropic submanifold, then you actually do have a subbundle of the normal bundle. You have uh, what's called the symplectic normal bundle. So Tn uh, upper omega are, are the vectors which are omega orthogonal to the tangent bundle of N. And quotienting by, by Tn, uh, this is called the symplectic normal bundle. So it's, its fibers have a symplectic structure. That's why it's called like that. So this is our subbundle of the normal bundle. And so this plays the role of our F. And so, yeah, we are in business. So we get this uh, order two weighting, and we get a corresponding weighted normal bundle. Not a vector bundle, but something very close to it. And we can run the same story as before. So now our two formula we have in this weighted sense is actually uh, of filtration degree two. Because we've, so to speak, doubled uh, the weights of, of the linear directions where it vanishes linearly. And so we can look at its quadratic approximation, which becomes a two form on the weighted normal bundle, which is homogeneous of degree two. And now this is symplectic, so this is good. And then we proceed as before. We can uh, choose a one form of filtration degree two, as whose differential is uh, the given uh, two form, or oh, the, the, there's a typo there, there's, the subscript shouldn't be there, so whose differential is, is omega. And uh, we define a vector field by requiring that contraction of omega uh, uh, with x should be twice that one form. So this time we have a factor of two because uh, we're basically uh, looking at a second order approximation, quadratic approximation. And then it turns out, uh, you can check if you look more carefully that this uh, vector field that we've defined this way is weighted Euler-like. So it determines for us a tubular neighborhood embedding of our weighted normal bundle, such that the pullback of X becomes the Euler vector field. And now exactly the same argument as before runs through and tells us that the pullback of omega becomes our model symplectic form. So this is how you get an isotropic embedding theorem. In, in, in this language of Euler-like vector fields. So let, let me summarize uh, what we've gotten here as, 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 a, as an outcome. So the bottom line is for every isotropic submanifold, there's a completely canonically defined local model, which is this weighted normal bundle with a symplectic form. The weighted normal bundle not being a vector bundle, but it's, it's some, some fiber bundle. And there always exists, uh, after some, some choice given by this alpha, uh, there exists a weighted tubular neighborhood embedding which identifies the symplectic form on your ambient manifold M with this model symplectic form. So it's a small improvement uh, to the original Weinstein isotropic embedding theorem for isotropic submanifolds, where you also have a local model, but the two form uh, that you construct on the local model, it, it depends on some choices. You have to somehow choose a, a particular connection in order to, um, to, to define a, a symplectic form on this local model. 
So, so we don't have to make any such choices. Our local model is completely canonical. Yeah, and, and I think I'm out of time and, and, and just in time. So just, just some, some concluding remarks. First of all, um, th there's a whole story also with def weighted deformation spaces, weighted blow-ups and so on. Uh, one can uh, introduce more weightings, multi-filtrations. Um, there are other applications to uh, so-called filtered manifolds, which have been very much studied lately in, in, in index theory. And so this was actually one of my main motivations for, for developing this theory in the first place couldn't get into that. And there are many more examples for this weighted story, which uh, come from um, singular Lie filtrations. So these are filtrations of, of the Lie algebra of vector fields, uh, compatible with bracket. Um, and yeah, so, so if you have such a Lie filtration, then uh, the degree zero part of that filtration gives a singular foliation. And every leaf of that singular foliation then has a canonical weighting and so so our story applies there but this is really all i wanted to say so thank you very much